Here you see a fairly common issue, an old mechanical automotive part. That hole in the top of this piece is no longer round. When I measure it, on one end it measures roughly 270 thousandths, the other end is measuring about 277, except it's also in a weird taper to one side. If we look at this side, it does look a little more round, but you know, it's not even centered, and this is an original part. But the problem with it being tapered like that and that much room is supposed to have a one quarter inch shaft going through it. So everything's wobbling around and not working well. In this video, we're going to show you how we're going to fix that up real quick. You'll find this on lots of old parts that are mechanical for various machinery, automobiles, tractors, etc. that you have to fix. In this case, it's part of a remote shift mechanism, meaning they move the shifter off the floor up onto the column, and this is one of the pieces that deals with it. Stay tuned, and we'll show you how we fix it. We're going to try to get our piece loaded in the vise here so that we can center up on it and drill it. And we're going to drill it out to a size larger yet, and I'm going to press in a piece with the press over here in a few minutes, and then we are going to hopefully finish that hole to where we have a reasonable size to work with. And I'm gonna have to come up with a way to support this. So I'm gonna find something to support it and we'll be back with you. Well, you can see I changed it from what I was gonna do. I was thinking I'd just put the part I'm gonna drill right against the V in the vise. Change that, I've actually got the part because it V's itself in here and it's touching here, here, in this area, and over here. And sitting on two little metal bars, enough to keep it up in the air, because we're going to be drilling over here when we're done, and get everything all lined up. That way we won't hit the vise down here, and we'll be able to drill through our part. Now this part's a cast part, so that's a cast iron piece, and we're going to use an M drill. So this is a letter drill, and our letter drill comes out, it's about a 93 thousandths, 92 and a half, right in that range. I have a piece of steel here that I've come up with. I keep all these scrap things around, I always seem to need them. And this little puppy is coming up about a 95. So you might have about an inch, pardon me, not an inch, a thousandth and a half press in with a piece of this little steel when we get to it. We're going to set up our drill and we'll see if this will all work for that. All right, now I've moved that around. The reason I didn't record it is because I'm just kind of in front of this. But the real truth is this part, as I showed you, isn't centered up for that hole in the first place. And now it's tapered in its different size in each side of the part. And there's no practical way to measure off the outside and get this perfectly in the center because of where it was drilled in the first place without taking out a huge amount of metal. And even with that, it's not going to be perfect because it's a casting. So I have done a bunch of by eye setup because I'm going to drill that hole out and improve the hole. So it's been done by eye because there isn't a real good reference to go after. So we'll drill the hole out, and then we will come back, make our other part ready, and press it in, and make it all hopefully turn out just the way we want it to. We'll turn on our dial indicator, and I'm going to zero stuff out here. That just lets me know we're staying in the same spot. We've got about 400 RPM, which is not very fast, but appropriate for what we're going to do. 
and we're going to come in here and see how it looks. And you're going to hear it be definitely not on center and hitting everywhere. And that's because we're doing this odd hole that's been messed up already. Looks. Looks like we're getting it pretty good all the way around, picking up all the oblong hole. got a decent hole in the part. All right, there's our part, and I'm a little shaky, but you can see I've got a little tapered end on that piece of steel I'm going to use. That was already there. It does fit in there, but it's going to be a tight fit like I want it to be. And what I'm going to do now is set up and press that through there, and then we're going to cut it off, clean the ends, and then go back and re-drill it. Over here on the press, we're going to see if we can't get this to push in and push through just a bit. I've got a couple little bars sitting here, so I'm sitting on the edges of that particular portion of the casting with an opening between, and yes, it's a ways down to get to it. That's as high as I can put the press up. I could obviously find something, but we'll bring it down and we'll see if we can't press it in. As you can see, I moved it over on one bar temporarily until I get it pressed in most of the way. And it's going in. I'm press it down until it really won't press, which will mean I'll have hit bottom. And then I'm going to press it through just a little bit. We pretty much are at bottom. So now i got to set up and press it through. Ends of these bars are just a little bit um, rounded. That's the way they were made. And so I want to have it so I get a fairly good support. Get it over under here a little better. And try and push it through now the rest of the way. more than just pretty much get it flush. There's a little edge on there though, so it'll have to be through a little bit. It's real close. I'm going to go just a little bit more. precise method but it is producing what we want to have in the end which is the part is now sticking through you may not see it from there because I'm focused in such a way I don't know I'll bring it up close in just a moment there you have the part pushed through that little edge is the part I was talking about it was also a little tapered so I could get to start and it's pushed through and you can see I've got that what amounts to a stud now I'm going to hacksaw that off, not bore you with hacksawing it, and then we will sand off the two sides and we'll be set to drill through it after we sand off those two sides. We're centered back up 
on the part, say in the Sureline system, you'll notice I put it in the way I was originally thinking of putting it in, but I had to because I probably should have pressed it the other way around because the one end already had basically a center. And so I'm working with the centered end. I've got it in the V block set up here. We got your little V to hold on to it. And we're going to try to drill it. Again, it's been done by eye because we have a tapered casting with a non-centered hole on one side and pretty much centered on the other side just by how the casting is. That's a quarter inch drill. And of course, drills aren't as accurate as mills by any means. But we'd like to end up with a quarter inch hole. If it's just a teeny bit bigger, that's fine compared to being tapered and a mess. And so we're going to see how this goes. Bring it down through here. So far it looks like we're doing pretty good. It's over the slot in the vise, so I won't actually drill into the vise. Here you can see the part goes in there beautifully. It does not wobble like it did, but it slides right in and out. So we like that. You can see this is our leftover after we drilled it, which allows us to have just a little bit of clearance for a quarter inch shaft that goes in there. We no longer have a hole that is sort of egg shaped and tapered across. That will work a lot better. See you in the next video.